So this is the easiest racket to play with ever. Let me tell you why. So there's a reason why the Yonex Nanoflare 800 is incredibly popular with the pros. The Nanoflare 800 is like a super lean, mean machine. And as soon as you get into a rally that needs to be fast, this racket will absolutely reward you with tons of pure speed. So first off, the Nanoflare 800 is part of Yonex's headlight category series and it's the current flagship racket in the series alongside a sibling, the Nanoflare 700. The Nanoflare 800 is a direct replacement model for the pretty popular but previous generation Nano Ray 800. So out of all the Nanoflare models, the 800 is the most head heavy but still considered headlight or even very close to being an even balanced racket. In Yonex's promo video of this racket launch, it stated rapid fire, the art of speed. And I can tell you, this thing swings like a hot knife through butter. So, so smooth. So on the visual side of things, it's got this super classy understated matte black with flashes of yellow and gold alongside streaks of red along it. Very, very nice. I also really like that the Nano Flare decal on the frame is holographic as well. So one of the key things that stands out for this racket is its frame. So Yonex calls it the razor frame. It is in fact Yonex's thinnest ever frame and it is incredible how thin this frame is. It really shows when you compare it side to side with other rackets. So here it is compared to the Yonex Arcsaber 10 and its slightly thicker sibling, the Nanoflare 160FX. So the frame profile of the Nanoflare 800 is also fully reset along the whole racket which hides all the grommets from protruding from the racket frame, thus making it really aerodynamic, increasing swing speed and also adding to the smoothness as well. In an effort to increase Nanoflare series' swing speeds, most Nanoflare models do have this, but you can see the slight difference in production quality and workmanship on non-Japanese models. So most Yonex rackets design tends to only have this recessed frame in the top half of the racket, but as designers move towards faster swinging rackets, I believe we might see more of these in the future. So I also want to note that the frame width is slightly smaller, so it doesn't immediately jump out at you when you first look at it, but I only noticed it after measuring it at 18 centimeters, which is one centimeter less compared to my trusty old Arcsaber 10. The frame also carry the new Sonic Flare system which combines innovative graphite and carbon fiber layups such as the EX High Modulus Graphite and M40X from Toray Industries. It is combined to achieve its intended strength and elasticity properties. I would also like to note that the T-joint on the Nanoflare 800 is smaller compared to other rackets as well. So another nice feature of the Nanoflare 800 is this ultra slim shaft which measures at 6.8 millimeters. So now I know manufacturers like to use hyperbolic words like ultra, hyper, super, etc. But the numbers don't lie. This ultra slim shaft is at 6.8 millimeters, which is pretty amazing. But the thinnest one I've measured so far is the Astrox 100ZZ at 6.3 millimeters, which its reviews coming soon. So remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon for that as well. Back to the shafts. 6.8 millimeters is pretty darn slim and even slimmer than the second generation Astrox 88s. So only the latest flagship brackets are slimmer and this buddy here is already more than a year old as well. So pretty impressive. Shaft length is 21 and a half centimeters and has a handle of 17 and a half centimeters. So as soon as you step on court with the Nanoflare 800 and start swinging the racket around, the first thing you'll notice is how quick you're ready for the shuttle and how easy it is to have your racket head in place ready for the shuttle. So pushes and drives are very easy but feels less weighty compared to a head heavy racket. But I say it feels quite similar to hitting or tapping a plastic bottle which is two thirds full of water. Feels slightly solid but slightly hollow at the same time. This might not have absolute power, but the ease of you be able to play your shots with is just absolutely worth it and it's very impressive. Clears were very effortless, which is helped by a speedy and smooth swing alongside a nice stiff shaft. Smashes on the other hand also felt slightly hollow and light, but something you would expect for a headlight racket. I would really have to focus on getting my body weight and a smooth carry on motion from my smash to be able to get more weight and power onto my smashes. So however, I can see why this racket swings so fast and buttery smooth with a super thin frame, including a recess profile alongside a smaller head plus a stiff shaft. This thing was designed to slip through air like there's no tomorrow. Every single detail and design element was designed to speed up the racket to compensate for the slightly lower head weight. You might have to change the technique or timing slightly to generate more weight behind your shots, but this racket will just make the shell go to where you want it to go. So this doesn't happen very often, but I might be swayed enough to change my preferred racket onto this one. 
The wife might not like it though. Let me know what you think and I will see you in the next one.